Welcome back to opening statements. There was a shocking new development in the murder case involving defendant Karen Reed. This is a case that has rocked a sleepy suburb near Boston. There is not an angry bone in anyone's body here. In terms of the town I'm from, uh, this case has divided the town. It has divided the town significantly. Every family is impacted, every family. And there's ways I can't even tell you. My own family's impacted, okay? So you have families that and friends that have been friends for many, many years. And this case has divided them. Yeah, it sure has. Uh, the victim in this case is police officer John O'Keefe, a Boston police officer who was dating Karen Reed, and the relationship at the time of his death was very strained. Now, on Wednesday, state police seized two phones belonging to Karen Reed, and this is in connection to an ongoing investigation into witness intimidation. Now, this probe is being conducted by a special prosecutor uh, who was referred to this case by the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office. Uh, the DA there, Michael Morrissey, we've seen him a front and center at this prosecution of, of Karen Reed for the death of John O'Keefe. And we've also heard a lot about that blogger, Aiden Kearney, better known as Turtle Boy. This is him. He's come on court TV. He's a huge supporter of Reed's defense team. And he was indicted. You know, this is part of this investigation that's running parallel by the special prosecutor, indicted in December uh, for witness intimidation. Prosecutors are alleging that Turtle Boy bullied a witness who was set to testify in front of a grand jury. Now, these phones are reportedly not connected to the murder case, so understand that. They're not part of the homicide case involving victim John O'Keefe, that police officer who lost his life. Uh, but. We're wondering, how might the seizure of these phones affect the trial that's coming up in that case? I mean, we are weeks away from this trial. Let's bring in our guests. I have a, a tremendous power panel. My goodness, look who's joining us this morning. Attorney and law professor Dante Mills is with us. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Michael J. Brown with us as well. And the state attorney in Palm Beach County, Florida, Dave Ehrenberg. Wonderful to see you all this morning. Oh boy, how is this going to affect the trial coming up? Dante Mills, may I start with you, please, Professor? Yes, good morning, Julie. You know I love talking about controlling the narrative. I think the defense team is doing a fantastic job in this situation. I think what you're looking at is really when politicians, for example, run for office, a lot of them don't want the attack ads to come directly from their, their their campaign. So what they'll do is they'll have super PACs run the attack ad, but of course it's in coordination. I think it's the same thing here. The defense team didn't want to be out front with the bullhorn, but they found somebody who was willing to do it, who believed in the cause, so they coordinated with them. Uh, I do believe Karen Reed was having conversations with him that has to be the probe and why they took the phones to see what the communication was, but she was probably putting a turtle, uh, putting a battery in Turtle Boy's back. I'm saying, yes, this is absolutely true. And if you want to talk about it, feel free. You have my my authority or my my uh, my blessing to do so. Um, but I think it, it works very well for the prosecution and gives people something to talk about, which will cause doubt in her murder case. And it's worth the risk. Dante, I appreciate what you're saying. Thank you for all of that. Michael J. Brown, to you next, please. How might this affect the trial? Good morning, Julie. Uh, the concern I have from a defense standpoint is, you know, when, when the prosecution goes forward and now makes these claims or allegations that she may in, be involved in some wit witness tampering or intimidation, if she chooses to take the stand, the, the judge may have to make a ruling of whether or not the prosecution can inquire about that. And that's a really damaging and damning piece of evidence if it gets out before the jury that she, in fact, in some way, tried to prevent certain witnesses from testifying truthfully against her. It's, it's just a bad look for the defense, and it, it could be very damaging. Yeah, I appreciate that. A great point as well. Last but certainly not least, Dave Ehrenberg, want to get your take on all this, please. Well, I agree with everything that's been said already, Julie. I think the power for prosecutors of a witness intimidation claim is that it's twofold. First, it's its own crime, but also it shows consciousness of guilt. Of course, why would you try to intimidate witnesses unless you knew you were guilty? What do you have to hide? So it's powerful in front of the jury if that can get out. And that's why the seizure of the phones could be important evidence, no matter what the blogger says outside the courthouse. 
Right. No, appreciate it, Dave. Okay, so uh, thinking about this, something that really, really hit me. I mean, it's always been in my mind that, okay, with these two narratives, somebody's lying here. But somebody's lying big, right, with, with this big development. As we're drawing closer and closer to the trial date, we're thinking about these seized phones. And then, of course, there's the question, is Karen Reed part of these protests? Is, is this a paid mob? That is a fair question. Uh, you know, they're looking at her phones. Did she have anything to do with paying anybody uh, to do this or to do any witness intimidation? And our court TV cameras, we've been there for all these hearings. We see the protests. I mean, it's, it's really crazy. I mean, look at this truck with, with the sign. How much did that cost to put that on the truck? Uh, and this has caused lots of contention between Canton residents and law enforcement officials. And so, Either the police are really engaged in this grand cover up, I mean, and this is grand, you know, or is she behind these protests? Uh, let's talk about these things. Um, let's go around the horn, but we're going to do it in reverse order this time. Uh, Dave Ehrenberg, um, start us off. Uh, do you think somebody's lying and lying here really badly? Sure looks like it. If you can get the video of those signs of the protesters out there, there's something interesting about those signs. They all look like they're made by the same person. This doesn't look like some spontaneous outbreak of, of a concerned citizen. Look at those signs. Look at the font. Look at the print. It looks like they're made by the same company, the printer, the person, and the people out there. I wonder if they've been paid. I wonder if they're part of an organized group. This is what happens when you have a defendant with means or with support in the community. You can get this PR war been already said they control the narrative and because prosecutors are elected in their communities people think defendants think they can intimidate prosecutors by a show of political force by a show of protest but in the end we just follow the evidence and are supposed to do justice regardless of what the polls say mm -hmm. that's the truth dave you are right uh you know and i would love to hear you know all of your answers on this how it, throughout all your years of experience all of you trying cases you know at criminal courthouses have you ever seen a mob like this? I mean, you know, there's so many court dates. You know, it's hard to get victims to show up. I remember being a prosecutor, it's hard to get your witnesses all together. And yet you've got these people taking off work to be there. I mean, it, it definitely raises questions. Uh, Dante Mills, I see you with a big smile there. Let me go to you next, please. Yes, I agree 100%. I, I do think that there's a part of this that's put together, but I think it's the right thing to do for her defense team. Again, I have to keep going back to control the narrative. They're doing a fantastic job. As we heard in a clip, the woman talking about this case is impacting every single person in that county. When has that ever happened? Um, but, it, but it is. And I know that we keep talking about the charge of witness intimidation, but that's just an allegation. I'm sure Turtle Boy is saying, I never intimidate, intimidated a witness. I just was convincing them to tell the truth. I'm impassioned about this case. And I was reaching out to people and encouraging them to tell the truth. Um, and I think that this is working for the defense. The prosecution is behind the eight ball going into a case where they have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, where people in the community already think that something nefarious is going on and some cover up may be happening. Mm, appreciate it, Dante. Yeah, I'm sure when her attorneys get a chance to speak, uh, perhaps today about it, uh, we've been reaching out to them after the news broke last night. Uh, surely they're going to say, well, this is a continuation of the narrative we've already put out there that, you know, she is a victim of this cover up and now this is to intimidate her by taking her phones. Uh, or is it? Or is there something uh, nefarious going on with her? Who knows? Uh, Michael J. Brown, uh, take us home. Your final thoughts on this, please. Let me let me just take the opposition to to our attorney, our state's attorney, which is normally the prosecutor does a perp walk. They have press conferences at the arrest. They have numerous members of law enforcement standing behind them. So they take the control of the press and, and, and paint a certain narrative. Here you have a divided town. You have somebody who's presumed innocent, uh, people who are passionate about her innocence, and they're simply going out there and showing their support. I have no problem with it. I, I think it's part of our system and it really counters the the strength of of the prosecution in our in our country appreciate it uh, you guys are awesome you all made tremendous points and we'll see what comes out of those phones i guess we're going to have our answer pretty soon if if she's behind the mobs if she's behind any witness intimidation uh, or if she really is a victim as her defense team says we got to leave it there